After more than a decade of patience and planning, Salt Lake City will be an Olympic city once again, it's looking like. ABC4's Craig Worth recalls the state's legendary sporting event, which took place only months after 9-11. Yeah, the 2002 Olympics were different from those prior as the village was surrounded in electrified wire and cops were surrounding the area. However, that didn't stop Utahns from cheering their country on as the games got closer. The torch arrived in Utah, and we as a state and a nation could cheer again. It had only been five months since 9-11, and we knew it in Salt Lake City as we prepared for the Olympics. There were as many soldiers and barriers as there were flags to welcome the world. The Olympic Village was surrounded in electrified wire, and there were cops all over the place. But indeed, all were in a cheering mood as the games got closer. You guys wanna go? Yeah. yeah! They spruced up the place, waiting for the big moment. Corporate sponsor McDonald's got ready to serve the athletes at the village. <laughs> the torch got closer and closer, and then it arrived at City Hall. <laughs> yes, we could cheer again. The president arrived. The world has shed many tears, tears of sorrow over the past five months. It now gives the people of the United States and the state of Utah great pride to host these games. And on February 8th, 2002, the game started. The tattered World Trade Center flag of 9-11 was brought into the opening ceremonies. The Olympic flag followed, brought in by astronaut John Glenn, Archbishop Desmond Tutu and Steven Spielberg. Indeed, all cheered again. People had fun. They crowded into downtown. Restaurants served long into the night. People partied. A real good way to get into a party was to bring a real gold medal with you. People wanted to be part of it all. Pin collecting was an obsession. The prize was the Utah Jello pin. Yes, Utah showed off its culture. Well, there was a lot more than just jello. It really was a time to be proud to be a Utah person. Everyone wanted a Root Salt Lake City 2002 beret. They would bring them in, and they were gone in a moment. People were desperate for them. I will trade you my coat for your hat. <laughs> and the only thing hotter than a figure skating ticket was a ticket to the entertainment shows at the Meadows Plaza. I got four in sync tickets, the one I've been working for three times, and I finally got them. <laughs> well, I might not have been quite as thrilled at that treasure. You could see signs of people grasping memories of the Olympics all over town and in Park City. People were here from around the world. The international press was everywhere. But I was probably the only reporter who wanted to be credentialed at the Olympic Garbage Center. There was tons of garbage from each venue. Yeah, what you see here is all the food that was left over from the opening ceremonies. Now, I didn't get to cover the ski jumping, but I did find out the most unusual thing they found in the ski jump venue garbage. Thought people's underwear, different things, you know. It was a magical time in Utah. So a dozen years worth of memories have gone by, but it's not just the games that come to mind. It's all the little things the sideshows, they were all around Salt Lake City then. Craigworth, ABC for Utah. Oh, you gotta love Craigworth. I, I mean, know. you have to love Salt Lake City Olympics. I, I know, it was the best of both this. worlds in yeah. that. I it love that. Incredible. 2002 was incredible. Do you incredible. remember going to events? Of course. Uh huh. I mean, with the Roots beanie. Yeah, like, the just roots so you know, I had one of those. It was such a thing. It was everywhere. It was everywhere. Park City was just oh, incredible. Yes. The energy during the Olympics was unmatched. And so mm -hmm. hopefully oh, we, we do that again. again. Yes. 2034. Okay. To. Well,